Pals, and welcome back to the Average Oddcast. We are back in the lab. It is Super Bowl week. Get ready for the big Swift Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs are headed back for the fourth Super Bowl in five years. I know uh, many of you and many of the listeners, many oddballs care about the Chiefs, and, and I care about you, and I need you to know that a chief is a mammal, you see, because humans are mammals, and the chief's mascot is a mammal, and a 49er isn't, and this is the year of the dragon, which isn't a mammal, but dragons would often defeat mammals, not in the year 1949, which I believe was not the year of the dragon. I could be wrong, but I think it was the year of the chicken. So the Chiefs will win the Super Bowl because Chiefs are mammals. Chiefs mascot is the KC Wolf, and uh, they became the official mascot of the Wolf or the of the Chiefs, the Wolf the KC Wolf became the mascot in 1989. It was back in the, or 19, I think late 1980s, I think 1988, 1989. They, uh, the KC Wolf re- replaced, I believe, uh, would be War Paint, a horse ridden by a man wearing a full Indian chief uh, headdress that took place for a while. Um, as you could tell, I would even say the Chiefs were kind of, forward thinking a little bit uh very progressive of them in the 80s to get rid of that i mean when how long did it take cleveland you know the washington redskins you know look at us uh in kc progressive folk another reason why and then we have mahomes magic we have taylor swift i personally people have been asking me mike you know you you are, and I'm the host of this this podcast, Mike Keith. I think I forgot to say that, but um, here we are. People will ask me, Mike, are you tired of Taylor Swift, or what do you think about? It? And I love it. You know, I think the Chiefs have been the villains, and I'm I'm real into, I'm real into that. Uh, I like, you know, haters are my elevators, and uh, to be honest, uh, I think it's just a good time. You know, I think it just adds something fun. And that's what sports are. Sports are fun. And the Chiefs are the mammals. This is the week of the mammals. With comedy in a van down by the river in our oddly funny world. We all live in an oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. We all live in. Uh, because this Friday, uh, I'm competing in round one of Washington's funniest mammal competition. Uh, see last Thursday, I had an audition over at, uh, the great American diner in West Seattle. It was a great show. It was a hot crowd. Cozy comedy is putting together this comedy competition of, of the funniest mammal in Washington. Uh, there are 50 comics in the competition. I don't know how many auditioned or submitted. And I th- think this is the first year for the competition. Uh, so that's, pr- that's pretty exciting. That's happening here. And I get to, so I passed my audition uh, last Thursday. I think there, there was like 10 comics up uh, for, or like six remaining spots. You know, it wasn't as as competitive as it could be for the for my audition slot. Uh, you know, there was there was quite a few spots. A sixty percent of the comics left. I was in like the last batch of auditioning comics. The sixty percent advanced. Uh, so how this is going to work is there's five rounds, so ten comics each night. It starts tonight, Tuesdays, when I'm recording this. It's a little late night pod. It's uh, going to be 10 comics, and then the top three from each uh, round each night uh, will advance to the semifinals, 
for the semifinals, however you pronounce that. I don't, I don't know how it's properly pronounced, but I'm, I'm performing on a show on Friday night at Comedy Bar here in Seattle at 7 p.m. So if you're here, you know, come through, you know, audience is like a third of the vote, you know, so come, pull through and and come catch these laughs, uh, folks. Uh, Cause yeah, yeah. Washington's funniest mammal competition is, is happening uh, right now. I get to be a part of it. Just, just stoked to be a part of it. I'm just stoked to be, you know, be here. And, you know, I can say that I competed, you know, in it and, uh, and I'm stoked about that. And I'm stoked about mammals, honestly, because the kind of the logo for this competition is, is a Sasquatch, which we can debate, you know, all day, we could be here all day. You know, this could be like a five hour podcast, straight Rogan status talking about is the Sasquatch real or not? And let's just say it is real. He would live up here or they, uh, one of them, they's would live up here in the Pacific Northwest and, and they would be an, a mammal because I don't know if you knew this and here, here's some just factoids to throw at you for the next trivia night that you're at is that mammals are the only animals that's right. I looked this up according to chat GPT that have hair or fur on their bodies. I couldn't remember from science class the definition of a mammal. And I don't think per se that is um, the full definition. I think uh, I also learned that they have lungs and they breathe air. What else would you breathe? Cause I read that and I, and I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know, then I was thinking what else, you know, they have lungs and they breathe air. Do, so do fish breathe water? Cause I always thought that fish breathe the air that's in the water. Maybe I have supremely uh, misunderstood what a fish is or really, I guess you could breathe in gas would be something that oh like a plant i think i might be onto something there which is really quite interesting so that's that's some stuff that makes a a mammal uh because plants are alive also i don't know if you knew this but mammals are warm blooded which i learned that means their body temperature stays the same regardless of the temperature that they're in so that's why whenever you have like snakes and stuff uh, they they need like a certain environment but mammals dogs that's another mammal humans um their their temperature is going to stay the same so this is actually crazy because you'll often hear people talk about their favorite athlete and they'll say you know lebron james he made that three or dame time dame lillard rest in peace to um, to him, we're not really resting. You know, he's he's still with us, but he's just not with the Blazers anymore. And and he'll, he'll make a clutch shot, and they'll say Dame's got ice in his veins, which is actually factually wrong. He actually has warm blood in his veins. I used to host this open mic back in in Cheney. At North Star Taps. So if you're ever in the great city of Cheney, Washington, go pull through uh, North Star Taps, especially if it's a Wednesday night. Go there. I think they're still doing comedy there, or not comedy, but trivia there. I used to host that. And I think one of the most basic uh, trivia questions you'll get asked is like, what's the, the world's largest mammal? Do you know it? If you said an elephant, you'd be wrong. <laughs> Because that is the world's largest land mammal. The blue whale is actually the largest mammal and the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth that we know of. Dun, dun, dun. Which is actually pretty interesting because, so we just said earlier that mammals only have fur or the only animals that have hair and fur. But I guess it's one of those like Venn diagram things where they don't, they like overlap. Oh wait, no, that wouldn't even work. We're, we're going to, I think Chad GPT might've been wrong about that to be honest, because dolphins and whales are mammals, not fish. 
unless they have, I don't think they have fur. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that to be true. There's some pretty unique mammals actually that actually lay eggs. Uh, humans have eggs, but they don't lay them. Uh, so all ma most mammals would birth, birth. So you got the uh, the platypus is one of those. Uh, they they lay eggs. And you know what's crazy about AI? You know, so it, Chad GPT was trying to tell me that the kangaroo is the only mammal that can hop. Let me can I just blow your mind for a second? That isn't true. I don't know what other mammals can hop. I mean, you can, you and I can hop, so I guess that's true, but maybe we, we, you know, we can't hop like a kangaroo. Like kangaroos can hop like 40 miles per hour. Like they're the most, they are known for having hops. Humans, we are not known for having hops. We're known for being very intelligent. I would say, and, and I, would, I would be able to die on this hill. I'd put 10 push-ups on it that humans are the, most intelligent mammals, uh, but we aren't, we aren't the best hoppers. You know, we have some great, we have some greats, you know, um, think of anybody in the NBA really, well, maybe not anybody, but a lot of people in the NBA, they're going to have great hops, wide receivers, cornerbacks, uh, high jumpers, you know, where they jump over the bar, they got hops. Uh, many women and men across our great earth, can hop really well, but we are, we don't come close to the kangaroo in, when it comes to hopping. And most mammals, I would say, live above ground or in the water, I guess, if you're a dolphin or a, um, a whale, a dolphin or a whale. Uh, but you can actually live in the ground and be a mammal, which if the Civil War takes place and we all have to go underground because of some tragic tragic thing that happened you know everyone's building their bunker these days i'm not saying you know the i'm just saying this is something that's happening i think we could adapt to live underground it'd be sad dude i'm living here in seattle and it's gray this winter and, and that makes me sad i can't imagine living underground we would really be having to take those vitamin d supplements but i guess we could do it uh, well i actually don't even know that's true uh, but it's something that we we could do and you know, uh, dogs and cats can smell really good. They're also mammals, which got me thinking like, what's like the, who's got the best sniffer? You know, cause some people lost their sniffer during COVID. I hope you guys are having fun, you know, because I just, I just hope that. And, you know, if you don't smell what I'm stepping in, uh, that's probably because maybe there's like some wind that's like blowing because here, so some people actually can have a diminished sense of smell. So if it's like the wind is blowing the wrong way, there's bad air quality. Um, all of these things can affect, you know, if you had COVID, uh, the, the average uh, human sense of smell can detect certain odors within a range of several miles. But that's crazy. You could smell a skunk from more than a mile away. Wow. You know, that's it. you can't smell everything a mile away, but just think about, I don't know, I guess I just never thought that we could, anybody really, I, mean, I guess if the, you know, just like if you hold all things constant, where there's no interference in ideal conditions, we could smell a skunk a mile away. I think the most Im impressive thing that I learned about mammals that I really want to this is now an education podcast. We're just educating. Last week, we got to talk about the history of biscuits. This week, we're talking about mammals, folks. Did you know uh, it is it is thought among uh, some of the most intelligent humans that the least intelligent mammals are the Tasmanian devils, which is crazy because if you're watching the video version of this, if not, check the the album uh, the artwork for this show, I have a chief's hat that has Tasmanian, the Tasmanian devil, Taz, the, uh, the cartoon character. And isn't that crazy, like the connection that is taking place this week about mammals furthering, I think that we may not be the smartest team, 
but we are the best team in the NFL. Look at this. This is, I think this is crazy. Um, did you know that there, can I just blow your mind for a second? There are only around 25,000 Tasmanian devils left in the wild. Why is that the case? I don't know. I think that they may be going extinct, which, which I don't know how that really in my mind that correlated. Oh, back to what we were talking about, the smell. So the human, uh, just how similar, think about your dad. I know when my dad sneezes, it is earth shattering. I mean, you have to, you might need to go take a prayer break in the bathroom after my dad's. It's so earth shattering, ear deafeningly loud. And I think that's something that just comes whenever you become a dad and you become older. I love my pops. Shout out pops. If you're watching this, uh, you got the best, you go, you have a strong sneeze, but your sneeze does not come close to the Tasmanian devil. And what's crazy is that, so they got these crazy sneezes that they'll do is like a bluffing mechanism. Uh, it's kind of like a ritual to, it's like, if you're like, there's two males and maybe they're, they're trying to get into a fight or maybe they're not trying to get into a fight. They're actually trying to like one of them, maybe one of them's trying to get a, into a fight. And the other one's like, gosh, Charlie, it's Tuesday afternoon. Like, let's just go to the watering hole together. They will sneeze to get someone to back down, which I think is crazy. And did you know that baby mother devils, which is a weird thing to say, by the way, will give birth to baby devils, which are called imps, which sounds pretty derogatory, which is maybe, I'm not saying that's why we think that they are the least intelligent of one of the two least intelligent mammals. I actually, what's funny is that I looked this up a little bit, I did some research about this and I found that that at the Tasmanian devils was one of the two least intelligent mammals, but I actually never, <laughs> never learned why that they are. I don't know what it is about them. They can sneeze like nobody's business and um, I never would have guessed that. And I actually didn't know about the the other least intelligent mammal until looking this up. But their name, it totally makes sense because this, the other least intelligent mammal is the slow loris, which I think is how you pronounce it. It's spelled L-O-R-I-S. I think this this show is really kind of like, I think this is something that you can listen to while you're going, uh, taking your dog on a walk. You're in the gym. It's kind of like having the radio on, like talk radio. You know, and today we're talking about mammals. I'm not sure of what is, this is going to be forever, but I've got a bunch of bananas left over and they're going bad. So the slow loris is, this is crazy. It's one of the least intelligent, but it's also one of the few mammals that's venomous. And th this is really, this is really, I, I'm just educating the masses here. Um, you're welcome. Okay. I, I'm doing the stuff that I'm doing. I'm doing the stuff that I need to do if, if I needed to see it. And then you came around and you said, hello. And I say, here it is. So what they do is, Here's how a slow loris repels predators, okay? So they can cause anaphylactic shock, which I should have looked up because I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. And they can kill humans. So if you meet a slow loris in the, in the wild, know that you can probably outsmart them, but if... You are one of the least intelligent humans in the world. You may be close to their intelligence. You need to be, you need to be aware because they, they can even cause death in humans. And they have this super unique delivery system for their, 
venom. So if you see this happen, if you encounter a slow loris, this is kind of like a public service announcement. If you see a slow loris and they're feeling threatened, here's what they're going to do. And you need to watch out because this could kill you if they get you with their venom. They will raise their arms above their head. Whenever they do that, they're combining the brachial gland exudate with saliva. Okay, so I think I'm understanding this right. Whenever they raise their arms, they're they're combined. There's like this gland that's combining with their spit. That's what saliva is. So whenever they bite you, it's delivering this venom that's uh, poisonous. This is all to say, if you if you're feeling down on yourself, if you're feeling like a dummy, if you're feeling stupid, maybe you applied for a job and you didn't get it. Maybe you made a mistake at work or maybe you made a relational mistake or maybe you, you did your taxes wrong. Now you're figuring out you owe the government thousands of dollars in taxes. Just know you are not the dumbest mammal because you're not a Tasmanian devil and you're not a slow loris because I'm pretty sure they don't listen to podcasts. So if you're listening to this, you're a human. And humans aren't among the least intelligent mammals. So be encouraged about that. In fact, we are, again, I don't know if we are the most intelligent. I'm going to say that we are. I'm going to say it's safe to assume. I'm willing to bet some push-ups on that. And I think that's evidenced in what we're doing today. You know, I think we're, we're doing the most. We are the mammals that are doing the most out here. We've got Apple Pro Vision. People are, they've got goggles on their face that look like they're going to the mountain. But really what they're doing is they're filing their taxes. They're editing a video. They're FaceTiming someone. These, these new computers, they are taking over. And, and once AI you know, and AI, you know, is on the rise. You know, really, it all comes full circle because, you know, chat GPT is is how I do most of my research, most of my, it, gosh, it's just, just what a lot of, a lot of what I do. You know, it's not everything, but I use chat GPT and I don't even use the full version. You know, I'm using the basic version of that. I've got, I got the free version, folks. We ain't paying for it yet. Heck, I don't think I'd ever pay for it. You know, who, whoever knows, but it could become affordable. I actually don't even know how much it costs, but this is all to say. You may be impressed or you may not be impressed with chat GPT, but I guarantee you, you will be impressed by Bark GPT. That's right. This is the world's first AI powered Bark translator. So what it's doing is real time communication between dogs in humans. Man's best friend can now talk to him. Just imagine your best friend, one of your best friends. I'm not sure if you use that language, but let's say it's one of your best friends. And now you can talk to them for your whole time. All you could do is you could, you said things to them and they, they associated actions with those words, but they really didn't understand what you were saying. And now all of a sudden there's this new technology where those hand signals and those weird sounds that you kind of knew what they meant. You knew what to do whenever you heard them, but you didn't know what they really meant. Now there's a two-way street. You guys are talking to each other. That's what this company, Bark GPT, is doing. Now it is still in beta version, so don't hop on the internet and say, Mike, you know, you told me, you know, I could talk to my dog now, which... Okay, if you think about this, this could be quite terrifying because your whole life you have went by saying things in front of your dog that you thought, who cares if my dog hears it? My dog can't tell it to anybody, any humans, right? Well, <laughs> I mean, this is going to be crazy because dogs they're going to know what's happening. They're going to see it and they're going to be able to communicate it. They can even spread rumors 
amongst the other dogs. They can pass along information. They can get to new owners. I mean, this is going to, you thought AI was, you know, coming away, take away tech jobs or, you know, helping high school students write better essays, you know, to get into college. No, what it's actually doing is it's going to alleviate crime. So praise God. I want to give a round of applause to humanity. You're doing great. Keep it up. Never give up. Never give up on your dreams. Okay. And in this new segment, we're going to close out today with uh, the hottest segment that we, we have done ever. And, and we just started it last week. And it is called Fictionary or Dictionary. Fictionary or Dictionary. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I understand nothing. Dictionary or dictionary. That's right. That we are bringing actual change to our world. What we're doing is, is we're talking about fake words. Words that do not currently live in our dictionaries. And we're saying, should they? Are these words so useful that we should call Merriam? We should call Webster. We should call all the dictionaries and say, guys, you got to get them in. We don't know how it's going to take place, but we're, this is a grassroots movement. So I'm getting a little choked up. Um, we just talked about the floor drobe last week and it, it was such positive feedback about it. And I don't know if you guys will have such an intense reaction as you did last week. Uh, but I want to talk about uh, this week's word is unibro. Unibro, which is a noun. And it's when a group of bros, they stand close to each other and they dress so similarly that they actually begin to blur into one person. And I see this all the time across the city of Seattle because the city of Seattle has just such a unique demographic or sorry, unique demographics. It's like a bunch of tech bros, you know, walking around the Google headquarters or they're walking around Amazon and they all just, they look like some tech bros, you know, they all got the Apple pro vision goggles on. They got their, their Patagones. They've got their um, their Hey Dude shoes or whatever. I don't even know what they wear, but they all look the same. They're all just like, it's like one, you know? And then, so I think what was so important or so, I think what we talked about last week that was so helpful was, is really the time that we could save by adopting the word floor drobe is that it really, it reduces the amount of words that we have to say in a sentence to communicate our ideas. So I'm trying to think, man, even how you would, uh, this is really, you know, this was a, a suggestion, you know, to talk about Unibro. And, and I, I, you know, at first glance, I'm thinking, that sounds pretty cool. You know, I just don't know if I would use it that often. Like when a group of bros stand so they stand close to each other and they all dress so similarly, they look, they begin to blur into one person, you know, and it, see floor drobe, go back and listen to last week's episode, riveting stuff. Uh, but I think where that really stood out, a unibro doesn't, because I'm just thinking, oh, you know, like Amazon, you know, that group of. That's like a unit. Look at that unibro over there. I guess you could say, oh, yeah, actually, that's a pretty good use. Is a, you could see a bunch of a bunch of bros. Maybe, man, gosh, uh, you go into any frat house in America, and you know, you go to Sig Kai, and and you see a bunch of guys, and they got, uh, you know, those bright colored polos on, those comfort colors, and they they also got hey dudes on. And, uh, or maybe they're shirtless in their front yard playing beer die. You know, no, no, sh no shade on the throwing. I'm just saying, you know, like, you know, sick, sick Kai is, uh, a unit. I'm terrible at forming sentences tonight. I, I don't know if is, I, I actually don't know if, if I'm just feeling a little dumb tonight, 
you know, or if I just can't even form a sentence. But I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, but I don't think Unibro is actually going to make it into the dictionary. I think it should stay in the fictionary. Just keep it as slang. You know, if, if you disagree, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave us a voicemail. Uh, and you can call in, you can drop a comment on, on this week's episode. I would love to hear your thoughts about Unibro. Maybe change my mind. I think right now where I stand is that it shouldn't go in the dictionary. Uh, but thank you so much to listening to, for listening to this week's episode of the average Oddcast. as always, my friends, uh, it's so good to be with you. And I just want to encourage you, you know, uh, the chiefs will win. And uh, that's just uh, what's going to happen. That's my, that's my prediction. We will win by three. It will come down uh, to a, you know, the Chiefs had the ball last. Patty's got some time. They advance the ball down. Travis Kelsey catches a ball to put the Chiefs in field goal range. We kick a field goal to win as time expires. And then Travis Kelsey proposes to Taylor Swift. That's my prediction for the Super Bowl. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening and supporting us. Uh, join the Patreon, become a founding mother or father by, by becoming one of the first 10 people to join the Patreon. Uh, we will give you a weekly shout out for the, the tenure of this podcast, as long as you want it, by just signing up to being the first 10 to sign up and, and really building something that will, that will outlive us all. And I think that's that's something that's really important to many people leaving a legacy, you know, leave a legacy of laughter. And as always, my friends, stay funny and stay weird. Peace. We are living in an oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. We are living in an oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. Y'all live in an oddly funny world. An oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. We all live in an oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. Oddly funny world. Great shot.